What you just read is the last paragraph of the mission statement of Kojima Productions, the Japanese development studio spearheaded by industry veteran Hideo Kojima. Their first game, Death Stranding, has turned out to be a rather divisive title. Both critics and players have argued about whether the story of the game is too convoluted, the dialogue too expository and the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay too repetitive, even straight up boring according to some. While these are certainly points worth discussing, I want to instead focus on one aspect that I think Death Stranding has done exceptionally well. Conveying its central themes through gameplay systems that might seem superficial on the surface, but are all contributing towards Kojima's take on what it means to be human. This is Ludens, the company icon and mascot of Kojima Productions. When asked about the identity of Ludens during E3 in 2016, Kojima responded, that's everyone, that's us, that's the users, that's each one of us wearing that skull mask. So if we're all meant to see ourselves reflected in the mascot, then what exactly does Luden signify? The answer to that question can be found in the Dutch city of Leiden, where the cultural historian Johan Huysinger penned one of his most influential works in 1938. Homo Ludens, a study of the play element in culture. In the foreword of this book, Heusinger declares that next to Homo Faber, man the maker, and perhaps on the same level as Homo sapiens, man the thinker, Homo Ludens, man the player, deserves a place in our nomenclature. You see, for Heusinger, play is not born out of culture, but rather predates it. He makes the compelling case that animals have not waited for man to teach them their playing and then goes on even further by claiming that human civilization has added no essential feature to the general idea of play. Throughout the rest of the book, Huizinga breaks down how the element of play is present in almost every facet of life, from language and art, to law and war, among others. To gain a better understanding of Death Stranding, however, I want to highlight two particular aspects of the book that I think Kojima took particular inspiration from when creating the overall vision for his game. I already mentioned the first one briefly, namely the idea that play predates culture. During our time as Sam Porter Bridges, the great deliverer, we are the living proof of this concept. Sam is, and by extension we are too, Homo Ludens, man the player. We are the ones establishing the chiral network, connecting all the people living in the fractured America of the future. And how do we do it? Well, by delivering a seemingly endless amount of packages from point A to point B, of course. So, where exactly is the element of play in that? I think the answer to this lies in two deeply interconnected aspects of the game. One, in various gameplay systems, both complex and simple ones. And two, in the amount of freedom we have as a player to choose what we want to do and when we want to do it. Let's start with the systems. The most obvious one here is the rating or the like system. I've read several reviews of the game that lamented the shallowness and lack of meaning in this system. At first glance, those complaints seem perfectly valid, since the game merely rewards you with a certain number of stars and likes for completed deliveries, judging your performance in terms of speed and cargo condition. Looking at it in the context of Huizinga's idea that play predates culture, however, I think the system takes on new meaning. By gamifying the act of delivering packages through a rating system, Kojima effectively says the more efficient you are as a deliverer, the more quickly society can be rebuilt and reconnected. It is through our engagement with a system that we, as Sam, have a direct effect on not only the individual people living in shelters all across America, but also on the emerging UCA, the United Cities of America. Throughout the game, several characters Die Hartman in particular, continuously emphasized the importance of re-establishing the UCA. This idea that our mission is bigger than ourselves directly plays into Heusinger's argument, as according to him, play is a fundamental building block of culture. 
I think Kojima took this concept and represented it in Death Stranding in the most literal sense. As we are getting more and more people onto the chiral network, not only are we paving tangible roads and infrastructure, we are also paving the way for a shared culture to re-emerge from the rubble and ashes of a destroyed America. Now, of course, this process takes time and the long-term effects of our hard work are not directly revealed to us, but if you've paid attention to some of the emails and interviews in the game, you can see glimpses of what the future might hold for the UCA and its people. The musician can finally share all the songs he wrote in isolation and even livestream his performance to a holographic audience. The collector starts distributing a new magazine through the network, chronicling our adventures as the great deliverer. Scientists can share their research and collaborate to uncover the secrets of the Death Stranding. Hell, we even help Conan O'Brien and his girlfriend to organize a cosplay convention. All of this contributes towards the re-emergence of a shared culture between the inhabitants of the UCA. And it came to be through our act of playing. Play predates culture. You might ask yourself now, weren't we kind of forced into it by bridges? And wouldn't that mean that we are obeying orders rather than playing? Well, yes and no. It is true that Sam is opposed to the idea of helping Bridges at the beginning of the game and only reluctantly agrees to do so for Emily's sake. But at the same time, we are free to pick up side deliveries as we please and tackle them in any order, or even disregard them altogether for a while and do something completely different. Jeff Keighley, aka the Ludens fan, illustrates this beautifully in one of the emails. He calls us the perfect example of the Homo Ludens, as we are with Bridges, but not beholden to them, emphasizing our freedom to do whatever we want, like paying him a visit on a whim. He also drives home the point that our actions affect the culture and the world, which is something that any aspiring Homo Ludens would envy. And our freedom doesn't end there. You want to take a relaxing bath in a hot spring? Go ahead. Fancy yourself down a ride down some snowy slopes on your trusty cargo carrier? Awesome. See that mountain in the distance? You can climb it. All of these voluntary activities are outside of our directive imposed upon us by Bridges. Yet at the same time, they are also contributing towards our larger goal, even if it is in minor ways. A bath in a hot spring refills our stamina gauge. Riding down a mountain on a cargo carrier significantly cuts down on travel time, albeit with an increased risk of bailing. And exploring the environment during your leisure time can reveal faster and safer travel routes for upcoming deliveries, as well as reward you with memory chips that can hold significant data from the pre- and post-Death Stranding world. Additionally, this is where other, smaller gameplay elements further emphasize the playful nature of Sam, the ideal Homo Ludens. Whenever you sit down to rest, for example, you can whistle to your BB. Or, if you've completed enough deliveries for the musician, you can play the harmonica instead. I would even offer the hypothesis that this is why Kojima added all the little silly animations Sam can go through in the private rooms. It is a way to show that play and playfulness is something fundamentally human and that no matter how serious our mission may be, there's always room, perhaps even a necessity, for play. In the words of Jeff Keighley, if we can rediscover the kind of play he, meaning Hoisinga, was talking about, we can undo the damage caused by chiral contamination and rid the world of homo gestalt and homo demons once and for all. To think that games could be the key to saving humanity. But no matter how good of a player we are, we will not be able to save humanity alone. This leads us to the second aspect of Huizinga's book that I think particularly inspired Kojima when working on Death Stranding, probably even more so than the idea of play predating culture. That is, the concept of building communities through play. The multiplayer elements of Death Stranding are one of its defining features and as such have been discussed by many critics and fans in depth before. I believe however that by taking into account Huizinga's research we can add further context to these mechanics to emphasize why they are so important for the game. Huizinga writes, quote, the feeling of being apart together in an exceptional situation, of sharing something important, of mutually withdrawing from the rest of the world and rejecting the usual norms, retains its magic beyond the duration of the individual game." End quote. That single quote, I think, beautifully sums up Kojima's intention behind the multiplayer elements of Death Stranding. In this quote, exceptional situation refers merely to the act of playing as something distinctly unique and different from ordinary life, an activity with its own rules and set limitations. In Death Stranding, however, the situation we find ourselves in is exceptional in the truest sense of the word. 
with all its timefall and BTs and World War battlefields. We, meaning all the players, are quite literally apart together, as Huizinga describes it, building structures in our own game world that appear for others connected to the same server as us, just as their structures can appear in our game. By engaging with the system, we then help each other to achieve the shared goal of rebuilding America, apart together. In other words, as we are reconnecting the scattered communities throughout the game and getting them onto the chiral network, we are simultaneously forging our own bonds with other players who have helped us on our journey. The multiplayer also features a system that I think was designed to help the feeling of being apart together retain its magic beyond the duration of the individual game, as Huizinga puts it. I'm talking about the strand contracts you can enter into with other players. Now, I have to admit, I did not use this feature on my first playthrough, but reading more about it, it feels to me as if it is Kojima's way of nudging players towards forming longer-term bonds. The way it works is that you can enter into a strand contract with another player once you hit bridge link level 10. After a contract between you and another player is established, you see each other's structures more frequently in-game. This simple system is a way to ensure that the otherwise fleeting connections between players can endure beyond a single gameplay session. I think everyone who has played the game and reached the mountain area can attest to just how invaluable a climbing anchor or zipline can be in the right place at the right time. If you then come across such helpful structures repeatedly and recognize the name of the player who placed them again and again, it is not unreasonable for Kojima to assume that you'd feel some sort of connection to each other. Maybe even look up their Steam profile and send a friend request. I hope this video has shed some light on what I believe the connection between Death Stranding and Johan Heusinger's work to be. The idea of the Homo Ludens is rather philosophical and abstract in nature, but I think Kojima was inspired by it and wanted to represent it in a more literal sense in his game. By choosing the themes of play predating culture and play building communities, he achieved this in a way that would not be possible in any other medium. Because of that, Death Stranding, to me, almost feels like a meditation on the role of play in society and on games as a medium. Kojima spent the last 30 years of his life designing games and he is no stranger to utilizing the medium specificity of video games to his advantage. Just think of the protagonist switcheroo of Metal Gear Solid 2 and the twist at the end of Metal Gear Solid 5. With Death Stranding though, I think he went a step further and professed his appreciation for play and the positivity it brings to human life in the most pure way.